Another month and another new all-time high. I've got to say, I feel like I'm saying that line a hell of a lot at the moment. But if you look at the data, we've actually hit an all-time high in the five out of the last six months. So no wonder it's feeling a little bit repetitive. Well, in this portfolio update, I'm going to briefly comment on some bold predictions or claims made back in 2019 by one of the best-known investors in the market. I wonder if their prediction came true. And then, of course, I'm going to be seeing how my portfolio has done over the last month. And as a bit of a spoiler, it's been a pretty chunky jump. But it's not just all-time highs the stock market, but also my Patreon. So quick shout out to all my patrons. I really do appreciate your support. So thank you. So if you've followed me for a while, then you know that I've got a very special place in my heart for the analysts and head fund managers claiming that the end is nigh, as it always seems to be. You would have thought they had some kind of incentive to grab media attention. Well, the person of interest for this video is none other than Michael Burry. If for any reason you don't know this guy, whose surname rhymes with your favourite dessert at McDonald's, then he was actually made famous by the movie The Big Short, where he was played by Christian Bale. The reason for the movie is that he was one of the very few people to bet on the subprime mortgage crisis in the US back in 2008 and he made a hell of a lot of money from doing so. So when he warns of another bubble or a stock market crash, people do tend to listen. Well, back in February, he posted this tweet warning that we are all doomed by saying the following. People say, I didn't warn last time. I did, but no one listened. So I warned this time, and still no one listens. But I will have proof I warned. And more recently, he sent out another smattering of tweets before deleting the account, including the following. People always ask me what is going on in the markets. It is simple. Greatest speculative bubble of all time in all things by two orders of magnitude. It would be easy to read that and think, wow, he predicted the 2008 crash, then it might be best for me to get out of the markets right now if Michael is saying so. Well, hold on a second, as this isn't Dr. Burry's first rodeo at the doomsday table. Back in 2019, he came out and claimed that he'd found the next market bubble. And what bubble did he find, you might ask? Well, he had found no other than the, the passive investing market bubble. This is a bit of a specific way of saying that the market in general is in a bubble with the main rationale being that there is no price discovery of people blindly buying stocks without paying attention to their fundamentals. After all, passive investing now makes up over half of the buying volume nowadays. Surely that can't be a good thing for the stock market, right? Well, lucky for us, we're sat here two to three years later, so we can see the results of this massive passive investing bubble, even with the global crisis slapped in the middle. And what do the results show? Well, from when this article came out from Michael Burry, we can see that we are 30 to 40% up, depending on when you measure the growth from. If you include dividends, then you could argue we'd be up between 35 to 45% up in this time. It's important to note that in modern times, which I'm classing as post 1980s, the very worst, worst market crash we had was a negative 55% drop, with a handful of 30% collapses along the way. So let's say for a second that Michael Burry is actually right and that any day now, so any time in July, this black swan event is going to happen. And it happens to be as equally as bad as the very worst downturn that we've seen in the last 40 years. We would, at worst, be down 15% from our initial position back then. And that's picking the very bottom of the dip, completely ignoring any sort of rebound that we might see afterwards. Without me labouring this point any further, let me leave you with a quote from one of the investors I admire the most called Peter Lynch. And even as a cheeky bonus, I'll end the video with one of my favourite quotes from him. But the one relevant to this is the following. Far more money has been lost by investors preparing for corrections or trying to anticipate corrections than has been lost in corrections themselves. Anyway, that's some food for thought. So, let's get into the portfolio update. To give a quick recap for any new viewers, my fund of choice is the FTSE All World U6 ETF. If you want to know more about why, then I'll put a ribbon in the top right hand corner. I've been investing into VWRL for the last three and a half years now. So, long before we were cruelly left with just one chuckle brother. Rest in peace, Barry. My strategy is fairly simple. I carve out an allowance for my paycheck every single month, and I put this straight into Vanguard as soon as I get paid. This way, I don't get used to the money, and it helps fend off any sort of nasty lifestyle creep that can happen. And it doesn't feel like much of a pain, as I'm so used to not having the money. Nothing more complicated than that really. It's probably the most boring strategy you can find, but I find it works really well. So for context of where we were last month, we were sat around about the £83 mark for VWRL, 
after entering the start of the year at around about the £78 mark, which was actually at the time an all-time high. So this meant we were already up 7% up and we hadn't even reached the halfway point of the year. And at this time last month, everyone was raving about inflation fears and the growth stocks had taken a bit of a battering at the time. This also meant that my fund of choice was up nearly 50% since the bottom of the pandemic back in March of the prior year. My thoughts really do go out to anybody who actually panic sold at that time. That must really sting. In terms of where my account was at, I was actually flat versus a month prior at around the £86,800 mark, which was actually a good jump of £7,000 since the start of the year. £4,000 being my contributions to my wage, and then £3,000 being market gains. My market gains at this point were around about £12,000, which I thought was incredible. I was actually £3,000 down at the very bottom of the pandemic, meaning my gains have actually increased by £15,000 in little over a year. Well, this month shows that May was a little bit of a breather for my fund, as during June, we were actually up over 3% since the start of the month which against historical norms is actually over four times the average growth you'll normally see in any month. For the last few days, the FTSE All World has actually smashed its way through the £86 mark and I actually passed through the £85 mark in a blink of an eye. And to make this month even sweeter, they've actually declared their Q2 dividend. What's actually so special about the Q2 payment is it's actually traditionally the largest payout of the year, with the exception of last year due to obvious reasons. Well, this year didn't disappoint as Vanguard have confirmed a payment of 58 cents for every share. If we convert that into real money as opposed to that magic printer money, that gives us about 42p in real terms. As I held 685 shares at the time of the ex-dividend date, and if you didn't know, then the ex-dividend date is actually the date that they allocate the dividends to. So if you buy a share of something after the ex-dividend date, then no luck, I'm afraid. You aren't going to get any of those sweet dividends. Well, at least yet anyway. So based on these 865 shares, I'll be getting around about £288 for doing absolutely nothing, which isn't a bad deal in my books. So what does that mean for my account? Well, as of recording this, my Vanguard account is worth £59,973.48. But once my dividends hit, that is actually going to push me through the 60000 barrier for the first time. This means my market gains now total nearly £14,000, which is actually past £14,000 once I receive my dividend. But from a personal point of view, I know I should expect my gains to get larger and larger over time. But I can actually remember a period not so long ago where I'd actually be really happy if I gained about £100 in a month, let alone £3,000. To put this into perspective, since the start of the year, my account has gained over £10,000, which is actually more than all my mortgage payments in this time period. But I need to highlight, though, that under half of those contributions are from myself. But I've got to say, I'm so used to the money, which for context, I've been putting this direct debit in since the start of 2018. I genuinely feel like I've gained £10,000 in the last six months. For me, I'm more than accepting that Michael Burry could be right and the market could half in a heartbeat, which would actually turn my £60,000 into £30,000 and my £14,000 gain into a £16,000 loss. But I know this is unlikely, and it's much more likely that the stock market will continue to grow at potentially another 7%, which, coupled with my direct debits and any future dividend payments I might get, would actually put me on £70,000. But on that note, this couldn't be actually any more perfectly timed to give you that piece of Lynch quote that I was promising to you before. So, let me leave you with the following. Everyone has the brain power to make money in stocks. Not everyone has the stomach. Anyway, that's all for this video. See you in the next one.